Hello, and welcome to the second part of the video series, Visualizing Data, Creating Infographics with Vengage. My name is Hila Sang, and I'm the Data Visualization and GIS Specialist at the Department of Knowledge Production right here at UNLV's LEAD Library. The purpose of this video is to introduce participants to infographics so that students can utilize what they learn in this video to translate their knowledge and connect imagery with statistics and narrative. In this video, we will discuss some considerations when making an infographic, such as selection of fonts and color palette. The information in this video has been collected and combined from blogs written by Vengage staff. You can find the links to the specific blogs at the end of this video. Before you start creating your infographic, you should plan the infographic. The process is similar regardless of your academic discipline. Whether you are a nurse who wants to illustrate the health promotion model, a criminal justice researcher who studies justice systems around the world, or an engineering student who studies the application of fluid mechanic principles. The first part in planning an infographic is to identify your topic. The topic will differ based on your discipline or the assignment. But basically, you want to ensure that there is a section in the infographic for each part of your assignment or each of your research questions. Please review the blog entry, How to Summarize Information and Present It Visually, which is linked at the end of this video for more details. Your next step would be to collect the data needed to complete the assignment. It's a good idea to consult with your college's librarian about data sources that are applicable to the assignment. Once you have your data and it's sufficiently organized to apply to each part of the assignment, you can start visualizing your data. There are a few ways you can figure out how your data should be visualized. One of these ways is by identifying the type of data you have, categorical, interval, or whatever, and then find the right visualization based on that. You can check out Cornell Stat News publication number 89 for more information. The link is at the end of this video. Another way to visualize your data is by the goal of visualization. Essentially, what are you trying to do with your data? The goal of your visualization could be to inform, which is to convey important message or data point, to compare, Examine similarities and differences among multiple things or part of whole. Change. Show changes or trends over time or space. Organize. Show groups, patterns, rank or order. Explore relationship. Reveal relationship between things. Or just explore. You want the audience or reader to explore the data and discover insights for themselves. For example, if you are trying to inform your audience, you will use large text, whereas if you want to show change or trends within your data, you will use a timeline or a line chart. More information on choosing a chart is available at the links in the end of this video. Make it beautiful. Now comes the really fun part, making your infographic beautiful. But it's not just about the looks, it's also about how the look functions to create groupings and help illustrate your data better. If you think about a good looking website, there's usually some sort of a grid. A grid will usually have columns and organized symmetrical sectioning of the page, which helps to keep the information organized. Additionally, there is a flow to the information. The infographic that you will be building for the assignment will be written in English, which means that the information, text, and visualization will flow from left to right and from top to bottom. The flow will look something like that. Next, we'll talk about colors and how to use them in an infographic. Colors have three purposes, to create contrast, to group elements, and to encode quantity. Creating contrast. The first purpose of colors is to create contrast. This means that proper use of colors allows the viewer to easily differentiate between objects. A simple example could be this one. We can tell that the hexagon is different than the circles. 
or that there is a circle that's different from the others due to its size. But it's much easier to identify the odd circle, but it's very different bright colored. The second purpose of colors is to group elements. In this object, we can tell that there are three categories, each with its own three subcategories. Each subcategory has a few bullet points too, but it's a little difficult to differentiate between the groups, especially which subcategory goes with each category, and similarly with the bullet points. Once we color each category with a different color, it's much easier to differentiate among the categories. It's easier to tell which subcategories belongs to marketing, which one goes with customer service, and the ones that belong to productivity. Encoding quantity is the third purpose of colors in infographic. The human eye can identify between four and five differences or levels of the same color. However, if you add another color to this that is complementary or matches really well with the color, like in this example of blue to very light yellowish green, the human eye can identify up to nine levels. Fonts are an important part of an infographic. A font is the design of the letter, the particular size and weight of a specific typeface. The distinction between font and typeface is becoming outdated, and now the terms font and typeface are used interchangeably. Fonts have three uses in infographics. First, they impact legibility and readability. They create a sense of visual hierarchy on the page. And lastly, they evoke emotions and have personality. There are two aspects to the ease of reading text, legibility and readability. Legibility means that your eyes are able to decipher any given letter on the page or screen. For example, the letters on the right are clearly less legible than the ones on the left. And the farther you go from the screen, the more difficult it is to make out the word on the right. Readability refers to how easy it is to read large passages of text. That's why books, which are meant for longer periods of reading, are printed in a font that is usually different than a font you will see in a website, which usually assumes shorter time spent reading the text. The text on the left is an example of a low readability font because the pixelation makes it difficult for the eye to tolerate reading it over a long period of time. The size, width, and weight of a font help create a visual hierarchy on a page. This is the front page of the New York Times from September 2nd, 1939, the very early days of World War II. We can see on this page that the name of the newspaper is the largest type of the page and is in a unique font. The next largest title is the main headline of the day, which is also italicized or slightly slanted. Subtitles are a little smaller with different weight and typeface, and the copy text is very small. Creating this hierarchy helps the reader navigate the page and focus on what he or she wants to read the most and identify the data that is most important. In this example, there is no hierarchy of size or weight. While in the same text, merely adding a size for the title and bolding the keywords helps the reader focus on the main point the author makes. Fonts evoke emotion based on their shape, size, style, and weight. Let's take, for example, the sentence, I'm waiting for you. In an all caps, serif, office-ish font, it may read like your manager is waiting for you and may be angry at your tardiness. As a side note, at most instances, writing something in all caps will read as if you are yelling, so it's best to avoid doing that. The next example uses the same sentence, but the soft script font suggests playfulness, perhaps a note left by a romantic partner. The last example is not so fun. The wide brush strokes evoke feelings of fear, like something from a horror movie. For more information about the considerations discussed in this video, please review the following links. That's it for the second part. Thank you for watching. 
In this video, we discussed ways to organize your infographic and some considerations to make it visually pleasing to your viewer. Please continue to the third video in the series to learn about Vengage, the program we'll be using to create an infographic, and how to select a layout for your infographic.